G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the OTS-02 Caparis. Now, I'm not actually sure if that's how you pronounce the name of this weapon, but I have no frame of reference, so that's just what I'm going to go with. Anyways, this weapon comes to you in Fallout 4 in the form of a highly customizable standalone submachine gun type weapon. It kind of looks like a mini uh, Galil Ace weapon, and it actually has some custom first-person animations, which actually look really good. We'll get to those in a second, but first of all, we'll quickly sort these attachments out. Now, the submachine gun here has a uh, option for both semi-auto and auto alike. We're going to make this one auto, but it's worth mentioning that there, that's an option. We'll definitely be creating another one of these, just with semi-auto instead. And we'll go for a reflex sight for our optic there, for better focus and sighted accuracy. That's the stock standard. Basically, you get better AP usage per shot and bats. Anyways, so this next one, uh, the muzzle slot here, we'll definitely put a suppressor on. No reason to explain that again, I've explained that a hundred times, and we'll go for a large quick eject mag because, again, self-explanatory. Now, for the caliber conversion here, we can bump this from 105 to 128 damage using the 10mm caliber conversion there, so that's pretty awesome. Moving on from that, we can change the zoom in a little bit, so we can have a no zoom if we feel like it, or we could zoom in a little bit. That actually gives you a tiny bit of accuracy, so you might actually find yourself having an easier time hitting stuff in bats if you put this all the way up to 3.5. Although, being a submachine gun, that's probably pushing it in terms of zoom. You don't really want to go over two times when it comes to submachine guns. You can change the reticule of that reflex sight, so we'll go for a chevron. Nice. Moving on, we've got an attachment under barrel. It comes in the form of a laser sight there. Not actually sure if this thing increases your hip by accuracy, as nothing is said here, but one can hope that it does. Okay, that is about it for this weapon. Of course, there's a legendary attachment slot if you feel like it, but at 128 damage with a high rate of fire, firing only the pistol bullets, which are a dime a dozen, I feel like we'll be doing just fine indeed. So we'll create a semi-auto version of this, and I'll see you in good old Gunners Plaza. Righto, so we're in Gunners Plaza now, and this is our Kiparis in first person, looking down the site there. That chevron looks like a dot, maybe I should have zoomed in the optics a little bit more. And here is our semi-auto one, just with the basic iron sight. So it looks pretty good in first person. In third person, unfortunately, um, you hold it a little bit too far forward. That's unfortunate, but uh, yeah, the sort of laser sight helps out a little bit. You're still sort of hover-handing it, but never mind. Let's get cracking, and by cracking, I mean I'm going to crack some bullets through some gunner's heads. As you can tell with the rate of fire on this thing, a blink and you'll bloody miss all of the bullets, but on the other hand, you can sack those sneak attack criticals so fast that we're not even in caution yet. These turrets aren't mad at us yet, so you know what? That's actually a huge plus. So what we want to do is find out where the bad hitboxes aren't, and we'll take out those turrets nice and quickly, and then we'll move on to whatever gun is, is in here. If they're a low level one, we should be able to take them out nice and easily. Yep, in one shot, as a matter of fact. Not getting that stealthy solution on this particular gunner, so looks like our time for stealth has run out at least for this mob. So what we'll do is we'll run up close and we'll hit fire this thing. Look at that DPS, that's crazy. See, I wasn't really worried about this thing um, having a sort of low damage on it, but yeah, you can tell this thing does tear through people. You're just going to run through your mag and your ammo very, very quickly. So if you're actually using this thing, be sure to keep a watch on your ammo because it'll go very, very quickly. We'll move over to our semi-auto one. Let's see if this is marked as a scope and um, by that effect be compatible with the sniper perk. Probably not, also that gunner just hopped over the table there. Nice, you don't, usually don't see AI do that. Also, was that a knockdown? I think I just saw a sniper knockdown. So, so far so good. Haven't really been attacked. Bridget got taken down there by the turret. The turret explosion does cause ragdolling sometimes, so let's just open up in vats a little bit. As you can tell, we get a decent vats um, AP usage with this thing. Nothing too overpowered, but, you know, it's expected to be around that speed too, so that's nice. Stop healing yourself, Captain Bridget. Reload the thing, Rain. He's healing on you. 
Okay, we got her, we got her. Okay, let's just pull back a bit because we're being hammered here. Okay. Might as well just hide in this toilet. Fading out of danger now. Oh, that was close. Back in a danger, that appears to be an irradiated gorse rifle. Does more damage than it heals, so ghoulish wasn't really helping us there. So we have to kill her nice and quickly. We'll move back over to our semi-auto one. This one does have different sounds because I've got a sound replacer for the assault rifle semi-auto suppressed sound. So that is why it sounds like an M416 in Battlefield 4. I do like the different sounds though. You get sick of hearing the vanilla sounds over and over again. And take, yeah, hearing that from me is probably means something because I'm playing Fallout 4 quite a lot, almost every day. But not like for an hour every day, mostly just to record these videos and then I do something else. See, that's how you not get that's how you don't get burned out on stuff. If you if I'm playing Fallout 4 constantly, always doing playthroughs and different runs of that, I'm gonna burn myself out. But if I just limit it to less than a few hours per day, then I feel like this game is relatively fresh. Although I'm doing quite similar activities whenever I play this. You'd think I'd get you know, good at Fallout by now, but no, I'm not actually that great still. After all this time, looks like we found out what the range limitations are like, and they are not great. So again, that's another reason not to chuck on the super rangy um, zoom sights on this thing, because it'll just screw you over. Um, it'll make you want to stay back, and then you'll be getting less damage efficiency per bullet, and that's no good, especially if you're playing survival, where your ammo is more limited than it is on softcore. Righto, so in Gunners Plaza, we did pretty well. The submachine gun held up pretty well. Getting those sneak attack criticals was devastating, but even without them, we were able to hold it our own quite well still. We'll move on to some tougher monsters. Righto, so we're in Fallon's department store. Chuck is full of super mutants. We'll sneak this thing up and see how well we can go. Now, I really hope Fallout 76 has more build diversity than uh, Fallout 4 does. And you might be asking um, why I might say such a thing. And there's plenty of Fallout diverse, uh, build diversity in Fallout 4. And I'm talking about, like, really endgame powerful stuff. I mean, sure, you've got... Ooh, we'll try to go for a collat here, actually. Sorry, I'm just a little bit focused on getting this collat kill there. It sort of worked. Please don't detect me. We'll shoot you in the head so it doesn't detect us. But yes, um, what I was getting at is that basically you've got two builds that um, basically shit all over everything else. You've got the stealth sniper build, which extends to stealth automatic weapons and stacking sneak attack criticals with suppressed weapons. And then you've got the stealth melee approach, which is basically the same thing, but with knives, hammers, and all of that stuff. And, um, and sure, there could be merit in saying, okay, there's also a heavy weapons build where you can do a lot of damage with shit like missile launches and fat mans and the like. Also, that was a very inappropriate bats thing. Um, but then again, you could, with getting like 900 damage with that VATS burst with sneak attack criticals, what's the point of carrying a 20 pound plus, um, rocket launcher when you can just do that with a couple of 10 millimeter bullets, right? Even, okay, it's a little bit less of a limitation in softcore, but if you're playing hardcore where the missiles weigh, what, 7.5 pounds each, something crazy like that, you're gonna end up you know, not having the capacity to deal with all of these threats like that. Also, what was that super mutant waiting for? Don't know, but what I'm going to do is shoot him in the head until he's dead. Didn't mean to rhyme there, but uh, my rapping mixtape is uh, coming out soon. Alright. Maybe they'll figure out a way how to make stealth and sneak attack crits not being the most powerful thing, and maybe people will gravitate more towards the big explosive weapons if uh, the ammo doesn't have weight, but if it does, people might just think, well, screw this, it's better just to carry around some sort of higher level rifle and lots of bullets for that instead. So, in a way, I'm sort of hoping that ammo doesn't have weight in Fallout 76. I haven't actually looked into that to see whether that is a thing that's actually going to happen, but 
if it is, oh, we do get sniper knockdowns with this. That's excellent. Okay. Well, there you go. There's the merit of using the iron sights over the um, over the reflex sight. If you feel like using this as a semi-auto weapon, you can um, knock people down with sniper perk, which is interesting. One, this doesn't even have a scope. And two, it's not a rifle. So, uh, yeah, um, figure that one out, Todd Howard. I'll, I'll leave that one to you. Rounding up the last couple of super mutants now. We've got ourselves detected, so we'll get some more. Hopefully, we'll get some more knockdowns. There we go. See, it's got a 15% chance, and uh, we're not really pocking that all that much, which is kind of interesting. Maybe it's just bad RNG. It's probably just bad RNG. RNG, sorry. At least this super mutant knows where he came from, but how would he have any idea that he needs to find the green stuff? Wasn't he knocked out when he was something something happened in the institute with him? How would they know about it? What's what's their go? It's obvious that the super mutants in Fallout 3 had their goals of finding more green stuff to create more of them because of obviously that's where they were created, they could go back there and see, but the Super Mutants and the Commonwealth, they're not going back into the Institute, so how do they know? Maybe they came into contact with some wandering band of Super Mutants from Fallout 3 and they got past their differences, one being a lot more bulky and thick, the other ones are just basically giant pieces of muscle, and they said, hey, we Super Mutant 2, we need find, ooh, explosive hunting rifle, nice. But um, yes, we it, we super mutant with the explosive hunting rifle. We need more of us to fight human threat because we're smarter than humans. And then the maybe the Fallout 3 super mutant said, "All right, well we, we got to find more green stuff. There's this stuff called green stuff, and it makes us more, makes more of us. So you got to find that, and you got to find it everywhere. We didn't find too much of it in the capital wasteland, so maybe we got we went up here." Um, we'd find stuff, and then I'm getting carried away with super mutant lore theories here, so uh, apologies for that. I'll probably just shoot something now, keep you all happy. Okay, it's time to fight Swan, except I'm now starting where Swan starts, and Swan just couldn't find his pathing back here, so that is why I'm standing over here. Okay, we'll get stuck into him with some sneak attack criticals. So far, so good. For doing this much damage to him, I feel like the health bar is going down faster than it usually does, which is kind of interesting. Anyways, as he comes closer, we'll be able to get more of an advantage of this thing's limited range there. And if we can nail some cheeky little headshots along with that, then it'll make for some good damage against him. We'll go for some bat shots here, let Concentrated Fire pick up the slack, because you know what? I feel like not playing my game. I'm going to let the game play itself for me for a bit. Okay, back into it now. This one appears to be... Um, not figuring out how to take a step forward, so we can basically demonstrate um, this thing sneak attack crit damage on a targeting dummy. This is basically the same as shooting at that guy in um, that sanctuary place in Borderlands 2 where Marcus's shop is. You get, he gets you to test all the elemental weapons on him, and then there's just an invincible dummy for you to see um, what kind of damage you can do to stuff. That's use one. You're just a, you're not even an AI, you're just an inanimate object used to test damaging on. And I guess that kind of goes um, even when he is moving too. Sometimes he might hit you, he might hit you a few times, but you just get him with sneak attack criticals and, you know, that that's about it for him. So, you know what, I think that is about enough of this weapon. So, that was the OTS-02 Kiparis, and it is a pretty decent weapon. I do like the animations. The reload animations are just submachine gun in... Uh, third person, but that sort of works to it. You're not going to really pay attention all that much to a reload, especially when you're looking at it from this sort of angle there. So it works fine, even though the third person animations really do not. But that's forgivable. I, I, I see that's fine. Okay, so it'll be in the link in a description. Oh, sorry, there's a mythic death claw you didn't quite get to kill. Swan was about to kill this person, but then I interrupted their fight. I saved your life, or so... That's really weird. A death cause, death animation, ragdolls, giant super mutant behemoths. You learn something new every day. That is why I keep playing Fallout 4 for just a little bit every day. You, there's just a possibility that you might learn something new. Thank you for watching, guys.